Today we're gonna find out if DivJoy is any good and we will try an experiment to see how much time we can save with DivJoy instead of coding it out by hand. Welcome to DevWorld, my name is Sam. Lately I found a great tool which is called DivJoy which is kind of like a template engine or something like that but actually it's way more than that. It includes a lot of UI kits, databases, authentication, payment methods and a lot more for React or also frameworks of React which are Next or Gatsby. The idea of DivJoy as far as I can see because I haven't really tried it yet is that you set up the, the, your application with exactly the, the things you want, so with the authentication you want, with the database you want, and then you get kind of a template which you can work on afterwards. But it's not just a template with a boilerplate, but it's way more than that. So it has contact forms, different navigation types. You're gonna see what I'm talking about later in this video. So today we wanna find out how much time we can actually save with an experiment. So I will work on a directory app which I will do once coding out by hand and then the other time I will code it with DivJoy itself and see how much time or if any time can be saved with DivJoy itself. So just as an explanation, this is not a paid video and I'm not a super experienced designer, so more maybe just like you. So I think it's gonna be a good kind of comparison for a medium experienced developer like I am to see how much time this can actually save. All right, so let's start with the hand-coded version. The idea comes from a website I did, believe it or not, with Wix and Wix code back in the days, which I wanna put on React right now. So that's the website, and if we go here to one of the categories, we can see one of the category pages, and here we can search for the areas. The new app I wanna do similarly, but a little bit more basic. So here in VS Code, I'm gonna start with the Create React app. I'll have some components. I will use some custom hooks, add the different pages, and all bundle them in the app.js. I will use Firebase as a database, and as a UI component, I will use Bootstrap, so React Bootstrap. So let's get started. All right, I'm now four hours in, and this is how the website looks like right now. It's not the most beautiful thing you will ever see, but it's basic as I wanted it to be for this video. We have a footer here, a header up here, and then the directory page. So this is for the Spanish school and it's already connected to Firestore itself. Then here I already integrated the filter options where we can filter for different locations. In VS Code, the whole thing looks like this. I have my components here, the custom hooks to get the items from Firestore. One thing that really sucks with React Bootstrap is the header. The header is a real drag if you wanna have this kind of layout here with the logo on the left side and the menu on the right side. So how are we time-wise? Here I have my little list where I recorded the time. We will do the exact same thing afterwards if I do it with DivJoy. Of course, minus things like setting up Firebase, setting up the hook, because those are redundant. So I will not put them in with, when I build it out with DivJoy, but you're gonna see at the end how I calculate everything to really see uh, apples to apples comparison between coding it out by hand and coding it out with DivJoy. All right, I'll get back to coding out even more and I'll give you an update in just a little bit. All right, the site is finished now, at least to what I wanna bring it for this tutorial. I added the login and register site. So let's say for the login, if we go here to hands at gmail.com with the password, we go in here and you can see the header changes. We have here information fetched from the Firestore database. We can log out here. Um, so, and then you can see the header is changed again. And here, now that's all database fetched. So if you go to doctors, which is not in the database, we get no results. But if we go back and we go to Spanish schools, we can see the different Spanish schools here. All right, here we can see, this is where I think the last time I stopped the video and I worked for another th uh, almost three hours. So right now we can say we are pretty much at seven hours, what I used for this website. And I just have to say, this is not an application I would put in production mode. There is no real error checking at the moment. There needs to be way more testing done than I did until this point. But I think it should give us a good idea for the experiment to compare it with DivJoy. Speaking about DivJoy, let's start with DivJoy and try to replicate more or less this application I built out here by hand. 
So this is the DiffJoy website. Here we can choose our stack. But before I start, this is a new project. So things might change rapidly once you see this video, but at the current date, this is how it works. So we wanna use Bootstrap, React App, Firebase Auth, Cloud Firestore, payments, we have no payments. We don't choose any hosting and we don't have anything here. Don't forget if you set up your project to go to more options because these are usually selected by default. Also, if you don't want them, you have to manually set them to none. Then we can go here and choose a template. I think this is more or less the one that fits our template. Now we can see this is already the website that is created and we could already export the code up here, either to code sandbox or download it. But let's modify it a little bit to match our directory. We can open the editor up here and then we see here we have the different pages and inside of the pages we can very clearly see our different components. So I really love the structure. It's very well laid out. All right, then let's start with the nav bar. We can go here and go to navigation and then we have different nav bars. I think this is what would fit my application best and then we can delete this one. And that's how easy it is to create a nav bar and we can already see we have dashboard settings, sign out, we can adjust that later in the code but that's the header that best fits the directory. Then here we have our landing page. Let's go here to hero section and we could change some things here, but I rather would like to export it and then edit it in the code editor. We don't need the client section here, so let's delete it. And then we can use the title afterwards. And that this layout already fits the layout we had before. If you remember, it looked like this also. Again, I could delete this section right now here too, because we just had three in the previous example, but I will rather do that in the code editor again. Then here we had the call to action section. Let's see if you find something similar. So here in this example, not yet. Let's see if we have a component for that call to action. And I think this would fit in here. And that's really how easy it is. We will change the background and then it's pretty much like we had it here. Let's delete the newsletter section. We also have our footer. I think that's good enough for our example. The idea is not to have it completely the same because at the end of the day, I wanna take advantage of this layout also. And that's about it. So let's go to the next page, to the about section. And here we had on our example, we had a little, a little image section. So let's add that up here. Let's go to components. And I think it's the feature section. Exactly. So you see how easy it is to navigate. I didn't even know that by heart. So we can drag that one in here. And again, afterwards we can delete the ones we don't want. Then let's delete the hero section. And that should be good enough because the team section down here is already in the right format. And then again, we can add a call to action section. And let's go to the next page. FAQ, we don't have that in our example, so we just delete that. Pricing, we don't have that either. Of course, we have contact, which on our side is very, very basic. So let's just leave it like that. If you would want to change it, we would do that again on the code. Then settings, we don't really need settings here. And the dashboard we will do at the end. Purchase a plan, we don't need that either. Then here is the dashboard. We will pretty much change everything in here to the layout we had up here. This is the login page, way more sophisticated than what, what we had in our example here. Okay, so let's export the code now. What we get is our zip file here with our directory. All right, I just unzipped the file to a folder. And what we have to do now is to do npm install all the packages. Okay, now that I have it installed, let's have a look at the package.json. So we can see DivJoy doesn't have a lot of dependency. This is pretty much a normal React app with Bootstrap and Firebase. So I really like that as I'm not a fan of cluttering your application with a lot of plugins. So let's start up the server. And here we already have the website. 
So that was pretty crazy. That just took around five minutes and now we have a complete website we can work with. Let's have a little look at the code too. So we can see here we have the components, the pages, utilities, styles. So we can see what we have here is a very sophisticated setup of a React app that uses Firebase, which is way more sophisticated than what I built by hand. So let me work on customizing it so it matches our directory here. As I said, I won't convert it pixel perfect to this example, but it just should look good. And of course it has to work with the Firestore I already set up. All right, I'll let you know how that went. And then afterwards we will have a summary and a recap about if it's worth to use DivJoy or if you should code your next application by hand. All right, now I finished. This is the website I did with DivJoy. You can see it looks pretty similar to the other one. We also have the categories, the specific categories for the categories where we can sort again. Um, which is a little bit different is the login and the register. So we put hands at gmail.com with the super secure password and we get the same dashboard again. What's different of course here is the menu which I like a little bit better if we compare it to the other one. Of course this is a little bit less centered uh, which can be fixed easily but with this account kind of drop down I like that way better than just having it here. Other than that, it's pretty similar. This is the contact us, very simple contact us and the about page, which is quite similar to the other one. And the code is very, very well organized. In this example, for such a small application, even too organized because every function is in its little sub function. So let's go here to database and we can see this would be a lot of overkill for this small application that we have. But of course that makes the application scalable. So if I would want to integrate something else in the database, it's most probably already going to be in here. And that's especially true with the authentication where we have a lot of methods already in that at the moment we don't really use like sign in with providers at the moment we don't sign in with any provider. So let's say Google or Facebook, but we would already have that in here and could just pull it out. So what does that mean time wise? We can see what I actually used to set up this DivJoy application was just under two hours. But of course I copy pasted some things that I already had and this is the calculation here which I would have taken if I would have set up the application with DivJoy itself. So it's just around four hours. If you compare that to the seven hours I coded out by hand it's a, a very big improvement. And what we also have to consider is that in my by hand example, we don't have a password reset side. We don't have a contact form integration and no error handling whatsoever, which in the DivJoy version is already integrated. Furthermore, this is scalable with methods we already have included, which of course with the example by hand, I would have to code out myself again. On top of that, the DivJoy version has a lot of checks and all of these kinds of bells and whistles that my by hand code doesn't have. So to compare apples with apples, I would easily use another three to even seven hours with the by hand code to get it on the level of DivJoy. And that was even just a small application. If the application is bigger, the advantage with DivJoy is even greater. So I would really say using DivJoy has a lot of lot of advantages. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of using DivJoy. Of course, you're way faster with that. I could, even with this little application, almost reduce the time I spent coding uh, almost to around 50%. The other thing is, of course, you will have a professional code. Um, you will have a code with all the bells and whistles, so with all the checks and the error checking and all of that. And also you can have a nice design. If you're not the best, let's say, design person, you will have a nice design out of the box with DivJoy. What are some of the cons? Of course, um, this is not highly customizable. And of course, this is not the idea of DivJoy anyway. Another con is, of course, you have to code the DivJoy kind of way because it makes it way easier if you want to code it that way. If you want to code very differently, which is not as nested as uh, the way of DivJoy, which is highly scalable and everything. So most probably if you have a smaller application, you might want to reduce a lot of, let's say, these nesting codes so that one code uh, instead of having a function in one code, it will re reference from another file. If you don't want that, 
then Divjoy might be a little overkill and they, and you have to use a lot of time just to delete files and, and refactor files and all of that. But if you have a bigger application, Divjoy is surely great. And even if your smaller application should be scalable um, or if you just like to have everything in its place, Divjoy is a great option. Then another thing is your knowledge has to be up to speed. In my example, React and Firebase. If you don't know React or whatever your stack is, Firebase or whatnot you wanna use for your database is not very good, then you rather wanna code it out by hand because you have to know what you're doing to understand kind of the, the code that the div choice spits out at the end of the day. If you don't have a good knowledge, it will be very, very hard to navigate in div choice. On the other hand, which is kind of a, a pro, and I use that, I kind of cheated uh, in a way. I use the code of DivJoy sometimes even before I use DivJoy actually to uh, for my by hand code. So I saw how DivJoy is doing that and I replicated it when I coded it out by hand just to have a reference because I knew it's where like the application is very, very similar to what I wanna build with DivJoy anyway. So yeah, I use sometimes code snippets or ideas from DivJoy in my by hand code, which I think is another pro. You can really use DivJoy to kind of up your game in your React code because it's coded in a very, very professional way. So if you don't know React on an intermediate level, you can use DivJoy to uh, start learning how to code like a professional. And otherwise, if you are on the intermediate level or even advanced, then you're easily gonna understand the DivJoy code. Then of course, an interesting question is, will I use DivJoy in the future? And the answer is for sure. It almost has no downsides for in, in my kind of case and it reduces the time you have to code by a lot. So you can use your time more efficiently with other things and just finish your application way, way faster. On the other hand, I really like that it's really a professional code and me on a more or less intermediate level of React and Firebase, I can use or learn a lot from the diff, co from the diff choy code itself. So. I think if I work a little bit more with DivJoy, my uh, basic React or my by hand coding of React and Firebase will just advance so much more too, just because I see the code of somebody that really wrote it professional and in a scalable way. So I hope that video helped to decide if you could use DivJoy or not. I just want to say this is not a sponsored video or anything, so this is just my personal opinion. I uh, hope this video helped and if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.